While there's no shame in using a honing guide, you certainly don't need one. With just a little bit of practice, you can hone freehand and get an edge that is just as sharp as you can with a honing guide. In fact, if you move on from basic hand plane use and get into using tools with curved edges like molding planes, learning to grind and hone freehand is pretty much going to be a necessity. When I hone freehand, I prefer to start with a hollow ground bevel. Using a grinder to establish the primary bevel is not only fast, it creates a bevel with a concave profile that makes it very easy to register on the stone freehand. To grind tool steel on a high speed grinder without overheating the edge, follow these simple tips. First, use a coarse grinding wheel. Coarse wheels grind faster and cooler than finer grit wheels. Look for a wheel that's about 46 to 60 grit. Second, keep your grinding wheel clean and dressed using a diamond wheel dressing tool. These tools remove steel particles and a small amount of abrasive from the surface of the wheel, allowing the wheel to cut cooler and more efficiently. Dressing the wheel so that it's not flat across, but rather has a slight convex crown to its edge, will also help it to cut cooler and more accurately. Finally, keep a container of water close by and cool the tool in the water if it begins to heat up. The thinner the edge, the more frequently you should cool the tool in the water. To grind a new primary bevel, I'll first color the face of the blade with a magic marker. Then I'll use a square and scribe a line nice and square to give myself a reference to grind to. Then I'm going to set the tool rest on the grinder to grind a nice blunt edge. This is going to help to prevent from overheating the thin steel while I'm grinding the new bevel. Hold the tool flat on the tool rest and pay close attention to the reference line, grinding nice and straight until any damage to the edge of the blade has been removed. If a blade will only require a very small amount of camber, like say for a smoothing plane, I won't add any camber at the grinder. Instead, I'll just add the camber during the honing process as I discussed in the last segment. But for something like a jack plane or a scrub plane, I want to add a significant amount of camber, and this can be done very quickly at the grinder. To mark the camber on the blade, I'm going to redarken the edge of the blade with the marker. And then I'm going to assemble the cap iron about an eighth of an inch or so back from the edge of the blade. Then we're going to put the blade back in a plane. And I'm going to adjust the plane to the maximum depth of cut that I want it to take. Now for a jack plane, I want this to be roughly a 32nd to a 16th of an inch. And that's a pretty significant depth of cut. And you can measure that with a ruler or with a feeler gauge, or you can just do it by eye. Then we'll take the scribe of our combination square and we're going to scribe the corners of the blade where it intersects the sole of the plane. So now I have reference marks here and here, and I can go back to the grinder and use those reference marks as a guide for grinding in my camber. Grind down to the camber line, again grinding the edge blunt to keep from overheating the steel. Now with the blunt camber ground, I'll go ahead and set the tool rest for a 30 degree bevel. 
More steel needs to be removed from the corners of the bevel than from the center, so focus on grinding the thicker areas until the blunt edge is even. Pivot the tool while grinding by holding it down with the front hand and controlling the pivot with the back hand. Check the bevel frequently to ensure even grinding and cool the steel in water or redress the wheel as needed. On the last few passes, reduce the pressure to almost nothing. Just barely make contact with the wheel, removing as little material and keeping the edge as cool as possible. Again, check the edge frequently. So now that we've got the camber ground in and the new bevel established, we can hone the edge and I'm going to use water stones this time. So after soaking the stones for a few minutes, I'll take my diamond plate and I'll rub the surface of the stone. This is going to clean and flatten the stone. Our hollow ground bevel will make it very easy for us to register the bevel on the stone because it will only contact the stone at the very heel of the bevel and the very edge of the bevel. The center section won't make contact until we've removed a lot of steel. And this is a good thing for a couple of reasons. First, it's going to make it easy to register the blade on the stone because we're only going to have to balance the blade on two points rather than having to balance a full flat bevel on a flat stone. Second, less steel needs to be removed because we'll only be honing the very heel of the bevel and the very tip of the bevel. So honing will be much faster. To get set up for freehand honing, I'm going to first place just the heel of the blade on the stone and then I'm going to rock it forward until I feel the front edge of the blade come into contact with the stone. Then once the front edge makes contact, I want to lock my arms into my body. And that's going to help to lock that angle in. And then instead of moving my arms, I'm going to move with my legs. Locking your arms in and sharpening with your legs really helps you to lock in that angle. So we can just make a couple of passes and then we're going to check the edge. And if I wipe this edge off, you'll see that we're starting to get a nice polish at the tip of the bevel and the heel of the bevel. Now this is a cambered blade, so I'm going to have to move my finger pressure along the edge there to continue to hone the entire cambered edge. But I shouldn't need to make more than a few strokes in each position because I'm only honing such a small area at the tip of that bevel and the center of the bevel isn't getting touched at all. And each time I reset, I go through the same process. Put the heel down first, rock it forward until I feel the front edge touch, lock my arms in, and hone with my legs. Now it'll feel kind of weird at first doing this, but after just a few minutes, it'll really start to feel second nature. It just takes a little bit of practice. If you feel that you're coming off the bevel, stop, get reset up, and reposition the iron, and start over. With these water stones and honing such a small area, you'll probably only need two or three passes each time. Now once I have the bevel fully honed on the first stone, then I'll move to my second stone. Now I use three stones for my water stone honing. The first one was a 1200, this is a 6000, and I have a 13000, and every time I follow the same process. Heel down first, rock the bevel forward, lock my arms in. And I'll do this for all three stones until I have a nice polish all the way across the bevel. And each time I change stones, I'm sure to rinse the grit from the previous stone off of my flattening stone. 
I'm going to end up changing this water later. So I'm not too concerned about rinsing the grit into the trough. Last one. And after finishing up on the bevel, just like before, the last thing we're going to do is to just polish the burr off that shiny face using our highest grit. This is the only stone that should ever touch the back of this blade again. And because I'm honing with water, I want to make sure when I'm done to dry all parts of the blade thoroughly and applying a little bit of oil to the blade will help to prevent rust. Of course, so will using it. But if the plane is going to sit for any period of time after sharpening, a little bit of oil helps as a little bit of added insurance.